Hi. Chris Hi. I got gum in my mouth. That's cool. Damn it. Oh, that's Paul. I was gonna go to you, but that's okay. That's cool. <laughs> now I know Paul's and yours. But it's okay. Totally. Sabbath. Yes, it is. I think the first thing we might have worked on was the theme song. No, it was the, definitely the, the Gaga theme. It was? I have a better memory than you. It was the Gaga theme. Also known as, to you guys, the harmonics theme. Yeah, but because does. I really suck at electronic music. I'm a lot better at things that are acoustic and that I can write out and all right. that. But you're kind of the master at that, so I needed your help on that. Right. Real hard. Before she didn't need anything. So. I didn't need anything. It's a funny process, though. Like, it's, it was an interesting, because Brina would literally just send me a recording of herself singing. On my phone. On her phone. And then eventually, you convinced me to buy an actual mic, and then you set it up at my house for me, because you were sick of hearing it on my phone. Right. And then I started doing scratches that way. I think as time went on and we needed stuff much quicker is when I sort of pulled you in, because you have all of this stuff. Magic and stuff. And I needed to do it much quicker. I would send them a scratch track and then they would listen to it. And then a lot of times, especially toward the end because everything had to be so quick, um, a lot of times they would come in and I would ask them to come in 30 minutes early and we would, you know, I'd plunk everything out for them on a keyboard. Um, for the first couple songs, they would actually come to my house and we'd have like, you know, an hour to learn the song and everything. But uh, they had to learn real fast uh, by the end of all of it. We ended up a lot of the time Brina would write the song, we'd get a skeleton version of it ready for the shoot. Nerves today come in all designs, not like in the days of old Lang Syne. We're hitting mainstream yeah, so with this a is comic a super basic Even background. CNN knows we got it going on. It's a sanctuary. It's like really, really basic. That's how we would record it. They just recorded that song to the beat and that's it. And then once they recorded, uh, Chris went in and started putting awesome instrumentals on it, which I think you did like three different versions. Yeah, there have been a lot of versions of it. I think ultimately ended up being more like... Nurse today come in all designs, not like in the days of old Lang Syne. We're hitting mainstream with our comic cons. Even CNN knows we got it going on. It's Hobbit Day was, was intense. meant to be a... I, I, Hobbit Day was almost a disaster, honestly. Almost, it really was. I was kind of convinced that it was just a wash. Like, I thought it, like I, like it was just done. Like, there's no way that this song will ever work. If it weren't for the fact that it was mixed beautifully by Raleigh Pickens, which is why he's a god. The first time I heard Hobbit Day, I couldn't even... I couldn't really even decipher what the song was. It was kind of going in two different directions, and I was a little confused. I even had to ask a couple people if I had the right, all the right materials. The vocals, there was, it wasn't a clear melody and a clear harmony. Adventure, the goblins come. So many things to do. Oh, so oh, 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 just a, a tracked session of just stuff everywhere. And I didn't know what it was. And I guess, you know, if I had some time to sit down with Brina, I'm sure she's mentioned all this stuff is so run and gun and fast that we don't have time to even sit next to each other. So much of this is over the phone. So I was trying to put the mystery together, try to tie it and find out what it was. But once I got into all the vocals, and I intricately know every note of that song, and, uh, and we got all the vocals kind of timed in and figured out what was supposed to be the lead, what was supposed to be back. Because that song definitely, it changes. Like every part has its own little, little uh, difference. A little pop. When we're together, nothing makes me scared. When we're together, nothing makes me scared. Adventure, I'm so excited. Like, who shall I be? So when I heard Raleigh's mix of it, I actually cried because I was so excited. But I am really proud of it. That's like, well, that's one song where when I'm done, I'm proud of it because we put a lot of work into it and it's one of the best. It's great because everybody puts in all this hard work and then to be honest with you, I kind of have the easy bit. I just get to kind of just make sure that it all sounds good.
let's, uh, she hates reverb. I guess as a mixer, you tend to kind of hide behind it a little bit. It's kind of the easy blanket to throw across everything. And Brina wants to hear all the details. She doesn't want to, she wants to hear every vocalist, every, every harmony. She doesn't want you kind of masking it. And she loves guitar, loves lots and lots of guitar. You're just concentrating on that dialogue track and making sure that everybody hears all the lines in the great writing. Because if you cover that up with sound effects and other stuff, then and the story doesn't cut through, then you've kind of you've ruined the whole thing. I make edits sometimes and push things a little bit left and right. I just never tell anybody about it. So, you know, you have to be willing to walk away from it and come back and check it again. Or send it off to a friend or ask your girlfriend or whatever it takes to to get another perspective. You know that you're done with a song when the deadline is due. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My, that's it. What's the latest I can possibly give it to you, and that's yeah. when it's done. When you have so many options available, I like to literally go in and draw in each note or make sure that the, which the is sustains why are right. And like, yeah, which is why I love working with him, because he's willing to do all of that stuff. And I... I uh, but why can't you just be magic and do it in one minute? Yeah, I can't yet. <laughs> it's, it's hard to say favorite song. My favorite uh, moment of composing for this was the entire Halloween episode. The Halloween score was used with an emulator of a synthesizer called a Fairlight, which was the most popular synthesizer of the 19, like, do you remember the scene in the Cosby show where, uh, like, the Cosby's go to visit Stevie Wonder and he plays that old keyboard and he's like, jam it on the one, jam, jam, jam. That's one of those. <laughs> and, uh, and so the whole score turned out super, super cheesy and awesome. There's a sound that you will recognize instantly from the era. <laughs> That's totally it right there. <laughs> totally. I like working with Brina because I don't have to do any of the stuff I don't like to do. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. I love working with Chris because he's so good at all the stuff that I suck at. Like yeah. all of the technology and, and I, everything. I hate writing lyrics and I hate <laughs> writing melodies. And she's, That's my favorite part. Yeah, so it works out really well. So we're, we just focus on things that we love to do. We're like Reese's. So we don't have to learn anything ever. It's great. I said we were like Reese's. Oh, oh I didn't get that. Shh. Mm -hmm. Oh! <laughs>